the goals have a lead, the goals blow a lead, and we got a big story as far as coaching is concerned. We'll talk about all of that on this edition of Locked On Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your Locked On Ducks, your daily podcast on the Anaheim Ducks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good afternoon. Welcome to Locked On Goals. It is Goals Thursday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jason J.D. Hernandez. I've been covering minor league hockey for well over a decade and currently still doing public address for the Firebirds who are in the playoffs, unlike the San Diego Goals that are very much not in the playoffs. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Um, This podcast can be found on pretty much any platform, including YouTube, at free on Amazon, etc. All right, so we're going to get right into what I think is probably the biggest story as far as the goals as of right now, and that is the news regarding Roy Summer. Roy Summer was pretty much plucked out of retirement by the San Diego goals. He was happily enjoying, like, okay, I shouldn't say retirement, semi-retirement. He was kind of in a background role with the San Jose Barracuda. He was the coach there. Well, not in San Jose, but he was the coach of the Sharks AHL team for a long time. Him with his bolo ties and all. And once he got into semi-retirement, the general consensus was that he was not going to be coaching again. Well, fast forward a little bit later, and we find out that Roy Summer is the new coach for the San Diego Gulls. And I'll admit, that took everybody by surprise. It for sure took me by surprise. So when I read that, my initial thought was, why Roy Summer? I mean, this feels like kind of a placeholder kind of thing. And I said that at the time, like, Roy Summer, for all intents and purposes, is done coaching. And for him to come back to coaching, especially after how last season ended, it felt like, a correction in the opposite direction. And this will be the fourth different coach in four years. Need I remind you that ever since Dallas Eakins has left to coach the Ducks, there have been a slew of coaches. Uh, let's go with Kevin Deneen, who was there for a couple of seasons. Kevin Deneen left a couple of years ago. Then last year, we had Joel Bouchard, which started off well, but ended horrendously. I'll get to that in a second. And now Roy Summer, who has just had a tough time with injuries, etc. He is now gone. Not officially yet, but sort of unofficially. And this was, this has been alluded to for maybe the past month. And there have been whisperings. I won't say how I know, but you know, there, there have been some whisperings around the goals that, you know, his time was pretty much done. I'm not going to pull up the message right now, but there was rumblings even like over a month ago that Roy Summer's job was pretty much done. The writing was on the wall once it was evident that the goals were not going to make the playoffs or at the time they had no realistic shot at making the playoffs. So now we're at this point. Now now we're officially here. Roy Summer is you know, another one year and gone coach for San Diego. So before we look at where the goals are going to go in the next direction, let's look at where the goals have been. I talked about Dallas Eakins, his success in San Diego. Kevin Deneen had a pretty decent start his first year that got cut by COVID. San Diego and Ontario were vying for a playoff spot in early, yeah, early March it was. Ontario was set to have like eight home games in the next three weeks. And San Diego was going to play in, I think, three of them. And then the season got canceled because of COVID. Okay, so we're going to give that one the benefit of the doubt. Then the following season, in that modified bubble season in Irvine at Great Park. Which was a weird time anyway. But I thought Kevin Deneen did an okay job. 
but I think there was higher expectations given who was on the roster. And I think that's the big thing that a lot of people forget is that the roster was stacked with a lot of talent, including Trevor Zegras, including Jamie Drysdale. When you have those two for a majority of the season, the expectations are that you're going to do a lot better, right? Well, wrong. Despite the fact that the goals did make the playoffs and they did make the rounds or they made that little best of three round in the modified playoff. And by modified, I mean only the Pacific Division played. But in that three game series against the Bakersfield Condors, where all three games were played at Bakersfield, the goals had their chances in those games. It could have gone either way. Oh, and by the way, there's someone else on that roster. Oh, who's Lukas Dostal, a 20-year-old Lukas Dostal. That was his coming out party. And Kevin Deneen couldn't get him past the Condors. I don't want to say that was seen as a failure, but that was seen as a, they could have done better. So out goes Kevin Deneen, which is a shame because Kevin Deneen was a great guy in the locker room. Um, very personable, nice to talk to. I, I, I was sad that he was gone. I did not want Kevin Deneen gone. Personally, I didn't. So in comes Joel Bouchard from Montreal. Now, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a bit of drama surrounding that coaching hire because at the time, Joel Bouchard was seen as being a possible replacement for the head coaching job for the Montreal Canadiens. When they gave that job to, Mar to Marty St. Louis, I think Bouchard felt a little slighted. So when he got the call in Anaheim, there was the perception that this was kind of like, this is your audition. All right. If you do well with the San Diego goals, there's a possibility that you can coach the Anaheim Ducks next season. So that's what it was seen as, as an audition. And he failed that audition. Let's go back to the end of last year, because this is, this is where I think things really changed. The goals had a good playoff spot. I think they were fifth at the time, I want to say. Yeah, I think fifth. And then they went on this epic losing streak where I think they went over the month. I need to like check right now, but I know they had a long, long losing streak to end this. There it is. So their last win, March 26th, five to one against Ontario. Then they lost seven to five to the Stockton Heat. Now we go into April. They lost two to one Iowa. They beat Iowa five three. So that's the one, I think the one win in that month. They lost to the Canucks. 6-3, 5-2. Lost to the Rain, 5-1. 3-0. Then 5-2. Three losses in a row to Ontario. Notice a the theme here. Then they lost to Henderson in a shootout, 3-2. Lost to Abbotsford in overtime, 5-4. Lost to Tucson, 3-1. Lost to Stockton, 4-1. And lost two more against Tucson to fall all the way to the seventh seed in the playoffs. Or six, rather. San Diego was third. They were in third place and dropped all the way down and barely snuck into the playoffs. This was the this was the very like definition of backing your way in. You back your way in with only one win in April, then you're bound to lose in the playoffs. Of course you are, even with Lukas Dostal. Because as I counted, that was 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 consecutive losses to end the season. So that alone is enough for a head coach to get fired. Never mind that during last year's playoff, which still to this day, it still kind of ticks me off a little bit. There was a couple of games in Ontario because Ontario was a number two seed. They had the home ice for all three games. In that first game, Ontario did win 7-4. And yeah, Ole Eriksson-Eck did come in relief. But 
Ontario was just a buzzsaw during that first round. Um, remember that there was a certain defenseman that played in that game that got an assist. Oh yeah, Alex Limoge got a goal from Olin Zellweger. Olin Zellweger had a good game one. I wouldn't say a great game one, but he was good. He was solid. He made some good blocks. He got the apple on that one. He played pretty aggressively. And then Joel Bouchard made the decision to not play Olin Zellweger in the second game. I know it's been a year, but still, still to this day, that grinds my gears a little bit that you didn't give this kid a chance. And this was when I was really, really in the process of just wanting to yell out, let the kids play. And that did not happen. And then the goals lost in overtime in Ontario. That that one, that one hurts. That one still hurts to this day because San Diego could have easily won that game. They had a ton of chances, but the lines that Joel Bouchard was putting out there in that second game, especially in the third period, was more than questionable. It was downright confusing. So he's gone, losing his final 13 games. Does this sound familiar, Ducks fans? Losing your final 13 games? That could happen tonight, but that's Ducks talk possibly later on. So out goes Joel Bouchard. He failed the audition. So now that there is no Joel Bouchard to take over Dallas Eakins' job this this season that we're in currently, that left Dallas Eakins to stay in Anaheim for one more season, and that left the goals scrambling, literally scrambling, to find a coach. And that's how we ended up with Roy Summer. That's how we got there. And what happened this season? Well, Roy Summer had to deal with just too many injuries. I mean, when you lose your captain for almost the entire season, that alone should be enough to say, you know what? It's a lost season. Chase DeLeo is a great player, great captain, injured for almost the entire season. It just sucks. There were times where there was eight injuries listed. There was a couple games at Coachella when I had to read off all the scratches, and there was eight of them, and seven of, seven were due to injury, one suspension at the time. But to see all those names just on the list, I'm like, damn. Like, these guys are down bad. So I cannot put too much blame on Roy Summer for this one. But I would like to think that with a different coach, they probably could have gotten a few more points, but not by much. And to be honest, with the kind of rosters that they were putting out there, I don't think there's any coach that could have helped the San Diego team. I really don't. So that's how we are now at this point, where San Diego will be looking for another coach. And he did mention this. On his last home game, he thanked the crowd at Pachanga Arena. He said on his final speech that he would not be coming back next season. And even after that, he sincerely thanked the fans, said they were the best fans in the AHL, and with his bolo tie, rides off into the sunset. Well, he will after this weekend, but that's going to be it for Coach Summer. And I think he's done coaching after this. I don't. I think after this season, he's probably not going to want to coach again. I. I think he's had a great career. He's done a lot of good. You know, right off into the sunset. Enjoy retirement, Roy. And for God's sakes, don't get hit by any more pucks. All right. I mean, I actually had. I actually talked to him earlier this season. Um, there was a game in San Diego where he just got drilled by a puck, was down for a couple seconds, and I asked him afterwards, like, hey, how you feeling? And he just kind of looked and said, you know what, I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling okay, thanks, bud. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna miss him. I mean, I talked with him more previous seasons because he was in San Jose, like I said, but just one of those nice guys off the ice. 
and a great character guy. So it's it's a shame that he just got dealt a bad hand. And you know the way he said goodbye was you know it was it was kind of a thing. It was kind of neat. <sighs> but here we are. About to enter a new unknown and about to have the fourth different coach in four years. So what are a couple of names that the goals could be looking at? And how'd they do their last couple of games? I'll talk about that after the first intermission. Stay locked in. But first, I want to talk to you guys about Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. I enjoy Built Bars a lot. I just got a whole box of the maple donut puffs. I love the built puffs. I think they're my favorite. The maple donut's really good, but my favorite is still by far the churro puff. The churro puff is the goat puff. And hey, you could find churro puffs online. You could also find them at your local Walmart or local Sam's Club. Oh, Sam's Club is kind of like Costco, but not. Anyway, if you want to try them in stores, you can pick them up there, or you can go to built.com, or rather, Check that, BuiltBar.com, and use promo code LOCKEDON15 to get 15% off your next order of Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar ever. Welcome back to Locked On Gulls, which is part of the Locked On Anaheim Ducks podcast and part of TLOPN. All right, so I realized that first segment went really long, so I'm just going to talk about the one name that has emerged as a possibility for the goals head coaching job for next season. And this was reported by a couple of sources. This was on 32 thoughts. And this was also uh, reported by uh, John Broadbent from defend the nest. So shout out to John on this one. Um, I had heard this. He wrote it. Matt McIlvain from Red Bull Salzburg. And that's out in Austria. Um, he just won the championship last year in the Austrian ice HL which is good. And he's got a pretty good record there. He was also the assistant coach for Team Germany at the World Championships the last couple seasons. Germany's done a pretty decent job. And Matt McIlvain is an interesting name. This is someone that is kind of outside the box. But just from doing a little bit of quick research here, uh, McIlvain, you know, has, you know, not been coaching for a long time. And, you know already making a lot of noise as far as like head coaching positions. He was also on a couple of different lists as far as, you know, coaches to watch out for that are like kind of outside the box. So I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with looking way outside the box here. Um, he did play at the Ohio state university. Um, he's got a pretty good track record. Honestly, uh, he also played with the Cyclones in the ECHL. So, you know, it's not bad. It's it's not a bad get if they can do it. Yeah, just one of those names that has kind of emerged for now and could be a good get. So Matt McIlvain. All right, let's talk about the last couple of games quickly and then we'll wrap up because um, I've got hockey to watch. But let's talk about the game on Friday, which the goals had a lead and blew it uh, to the Calgary Wranglers. I know which team I public address for. The Firebirds are, as of this recording, one point behind the Wranglers. If the goals had won just one of those games, then the Firebirds would be in first place right now. As it is, the goals jumped out to a fast start thanks to Glenn Godden. And then Dylan Sakura scored for San Diego. <sighs> but, oh boy. What happened after that? The goals had a good power play and just did what they've done all season long. They got a bad turnover in their offensive end. And an, and an easy outlet pass. Ben Jones got a shorty. For Calgary, and then Ilya Solovyov scored. Then Matt Phillips scored his 35th of the season. Then Brett Sutter empty netter. So the goals 
blew another game. They blew another lead. They've done this literally all season long. All season long. So that was the first of two against the Wranglers. And I'll talk about that other game because we're kind of running a little bit on time. So what I'm going to do is head to the second intermission right now. Talk about that last game and talk about the last couple of games of this season and just the Pacific Division in general. So we'll get to that on the other side. But first, let's talk about Game Time. Oh, the Game Time app, which is a it's an easy last minute ticketing app to use. Um, I've used it several times on occasions. I've used it to get cheap tickets to Anaheim Angels games because they tend to be really cheap on there. I've gotten Angel tickets for like five, six bucks just to kind of hang out. It's not bad. I love it. Yeah, I've had good experience with game time in the past. And I mean, it is the place for last minute ticket deals. You know, instead of planning months in advance, you can get deals on tickets right up to the day of the event, which I've done several times. You can also get exclusive flash deals on football, basketball, baseball, hockey, etc. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. And if you find tickets in that same section and row for less, then game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use promo code locked on NHL to get 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to Locked On Goals, which is under the umbrella of Locked On Anaheim Ducks and part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Once again, locked in with Jason J.D. Hernandez. So there was a game over the weekend that the goals just did not look good at all. Tell me if you've heard this before. Goals allow an early lead. Goals come back. Goals blow it in the end to the best team in the American Hockey League. As I looked at my phone, this was Saturday at Akrasher, I looked at my phone, I saw, okay, it's 2-2, two to two, how do we get here? Okay, so I went back a couple days later, watched this game, and turnovers. Turnovers is how that game wound up being 2-2. Two to two. First off, very stupid turnover by San Diego in like the neutral zone to get Connor Zeri an unassisted goal. Just whatever. It's been that case for the entire season. And then the goals come back. Vincent, he finally scored his first of the season. Woo! And then Bo Grew got a shorty. Calgary is normally very good. They're, they're usually money on the power play. So to see him give up that shorty to Bo Grew, that was shocking. I didn't see that coming. So then I look, oh, the goals blew at 3-2. to two. Just from what I saw of the game, this was a lot of Calgary dominating on one end of the ice, especially in that second period. The goals hardly got the puck, and any shot that was even, like, attempted, this was just, okay, a, a poor attempt for the San Diego goals. I don't think they even had, like, anything dangerous because they took three shots in that period, and I don't recall any of those shots being of the high-danger variety. So just another day in the office for the goals. Another day for Gage Alexander to try to do everything on that game, and he just couldn't. And that was a big crowd at San Diego, too. That was a massive, massive crowd because it was the last home game of the season. And the goals fans were treated to another blown opportunity. Final score on that one was 3-2, to two, thus ending San Diego's games at home. So where do we go from here? Well, two games left, both in Colorado, Friday, Saturday, April 14th and 15th, and then that will be the end to the worst season in franchise history. No joke, no hyperbole, 
this was the worst season in goals history. They were they've been in last place since December. Actually, late November. They've been in last place in the division the whole time, almost. And it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. So, two games of Colorado. We'll see if they can they can maybe spoil Colorado. That's all they can do at this point is spoil the party for Colorado. Which brings me to the standings in the American Hockey League. And this is where things get very dicey. No one knows what place they're going to be except for the Tucson Roadrunners. The Roadrunners are locked into the number 7 seed. They will play whoever is the number 2 seed. So here's where we stand. Every team has two games left. The Calgary Wranglers have 104 points. The Coachella Valley Firebirds, they have 103 points. Calgary is one point up on Coachella Valley. The Firebirds have two games at Bakersfield. The Wranglers have two games at Abbotsford. If the Firebirds win both their games and Calgary loses one, then Calgary is down to the number two slot and the Firebirds go up to number one overall in the American Hockey League. As far as three and four, the Colorado Eagles have 86 points. The Abbotsford Canucks have 85 points. The Eagles have two home games against the Gulls, and Abbotsford obviously has the two against Calgary. If Abbotsford wins both their games, go with me on this. If Abbotsford wins both their games and Colorado loses one of those games, then San Diego can play the ultimate spoiler Abbotsford would go up to three and Colorado would go down to four. Stranger things have happened. You never know. Then between five and six, Bakersfield and Ontario. Bakersfield has those two games, obviously, against the Firebirds. Ontario has a home and home against the Henderson Silver Knights. Ontario has gone from third to sixth like that. So fifth and sixth could switch around so that's where we are as far as the ahl standings with two games left each friday and saturday i will be watching my phone with great intent on both those games yeah let's see how they go with that being said we're just gonna wrap it up here um we're gonna talk about prospects next and we're also gonna talk up next i mean next podcast about the final game of the anaheim ducks The season is mercifully coming to an end. The Anaheim Ducks season ends tonight. San Diego Gulls season ends on Saturday. The Tulsa Oilers season ends on Sunday. And then that'll be it. No more hockey for any Ducks team. We'll just be watching the prospects from here on out. Which could be fun too. But I'll definitely have some more content. Especially the next few days. Once all the seasons end, there's going to be a lot of breaking down what the hell happened. So that's coming pretty soon. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This podcast is free and available across all platforms, including Spotify, Amazon, YouTube, etc. I'm on Twitter at StimpyJD. The show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks. If you want to drop me a line, you could email me at LockedOnAnaheimDucks at gmail.com. And once again... Very sincerely, thank you all for your continued support. It is so greatly appreciated. And Gulls fans, I cannot wait to see you all again next season. For Locked On Gulls, I'm Jason J.D. Hernandez saying have a great rest of the day. Please continue to be safe out there. Be kind to one another. And Ducks and Gulls fly together.